Let's just continue our discussion of structural isomers. Um, so recall that um, isomers are compounds that have identical molecular formulas, um, but are different structurally. Um, so these structural isomers are isomers whose atoms are bonded in different patterns, right? So uh, we can do an example of some structural isomers by doing uh, this this molecule, this molecular formula here, C2H6O. Uh, remember, the H's always have to be on the outside of the molecule because they can only make one bond, okay? So, um, you know that the carbons and oxygens have to be linked as what we've been calling like the backbone chain or whatever, okay? So, you can imagine since there's, we have an, uh, two carbons and an oxygen, we can arrange them carbon, carbon, oxygen, like that, or we could arrange them carbon, oxygen, carbon. Is there any other way that we could arrange those? I can't see it, so. Okay. So, um, then if we look, right, we've got the six hydrogens. We know that carbon um, likes to make how many bonds? Four bonds, right? So help me out, guys. Everybody's here today, so I know we're all it's all early in the morning, but so carbon, remember, likes to make four bonds, right? Four bonds. And oxygen, right, likes to make how many bonds? Two, two bonds, right? And there's the two what? Lone pairs, right? Okay, so let's show um, those four bonds. So there's four bonds to carbon, four bonds to carbon, right? I'm just going to show those two bonds to oxygen on opposite sides because we're doing like the Lewis structure now. We can just show these same thing. The oxygen already has its two bonds. So to finish up these bond line formulas, right, we just got to stick in our hydrogen. And we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Like that. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So these are actually two different molecules here. Um, I think we talked about these at the very end. Uh, we kind of had a kind of interrupted discussion because we were trying to go fast at the very end, right? But this, is, this molecule here is ethanol. So this is the stuff that's in like beer or vodka or whatever that, you know, gets you inebriated. And this stuff here has a different name, of course, because it's a different thing, right? This is called dimethyl ether. So, um, let's go ahead and draw the bond line structures of these things. We could do the condensed structures if you guys wanted to. Let's do the condensed structures first. Remember, mm. condensed stru structures, we just squish everything together, right? So, it's just like as if you were needing to write it on a typewriter or something like that, right? So, the condensed structure of this one would be, you guys can help me, CH3, right? What would be next? CH2, right? Oh, hey. Very good, guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm sleepy too, so it's all right. So this one would be what? How would we do this? CH3O CH3. Okay. And like we said, we could do it that CH3O, but it's kind of confusing when the things are on opposite sides. Okay. So if you did this, this is totally cool. Remember, we call these the condensed structure. Let's draw the bond line formulas for this. Okay. Um, so, bond line formula for ethanol, remember it's like that Charlie Brown, right? Like up, down, up, down, up, down. So, one carbon, carbon one, carbon two, and then the oxygen, like that. Okay? And then put the H there. That's the bond line formula. You could, if you wanted to, Put the H like that, that's fine too. Okay. Remember, so notice we're not 
showing our H's on the carbons, they're implied, right? So you know how many there should be because of how many bonds carbon has to it. But you have to put your H's on your hetero atoms. Okay, so let's try to do the same thing over here with dimethyl ether. So that's what dimethyl ether looks like. Okay. Let's see if I can, if I brought enough carbon. Yeah, we could build these guys really quick. Cool. <clears throat> so there's ethanol. So you guys can see it, hopefully, right? Oh, so that's it. Pick the bond line formula, right? For the ball and stick model of it, right? And let's change it to dimethyl ether. So we can tell their different structures if we have to break bonds and make bonds, okay? Why? Because that's a reaction when you break bonds and make bonds. Is everybody cool with that? That's what we've been talking about for a long time now, right? So let's try to do this. Well, if we twist it all around, no, nope, we can't change it into the other thing. So we're going to have to break a bond, right? Bam, we broke a bond, that's a reaction. We got to break this other bond, and then stick these atoms back together. I knew that would happen. Okay. And just like magic, right? Go off the screen and now it's a different <laughs> compound. So you can see that's much different than the other one, right? So if we wanted to show it like the bond line structure that we got up there, it's that, right? Okay. So that's dimethyl ether. Uh, this stuff will well, this stuff is a gas at room temperature, okay? And this stuff, well, is essentially a liquid at room temperature, okay? Like if you got some Everclear or something like that, right? Um, this stuff, if you smell too much of it, it'll kill you, you know? So, I mean, uh, that stuff w will too, you know? But not, not as quickly, you know? So, this stuff's no good for you. But the other stuff, you know? I guess, if you drink a glass of wine a day or something, that's good for your heart. Or yeah. So are there any questions on this stuff? The other thing you can see, so yeah, so it says there's some more things. Uh, ethanol is completely soluble in water, right? Uh, dimethyl ether is partially soluble in water. So these kind of uh, physical characteristics prove that they're two different compounds. They have different melting points, different boiling points, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so are there any questions about this one? I think that's a pretty good video. Mm -hmm.